to do uh, precision finger joints. Right. Um, finger joints are just multiple tenons that fit together like this. Uh, Jim used those to do these elegant joints here on the uh, on the drawers. Can we uh, come in with camera one? See what we can see here. There we go. That's those are the finger joints. You can see see it better if I turn it so that the uh, the sycamore is towards the uh, towards the camera. You can see how small these these are. These are very very delicate. And so, quite uh, so. In order to make these, they've got to be absolutely precise because uh, uh, there's a stack up of tolerances problems, right? Right. If you're off uh, even the 64th on the first one, you're going to be off a 32nd on the next one, and uh, 364th on the next one, and so on. You could be off a mile by the uh, by the time you reach the end of the board. Either that, or they keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Sure. Okay. So uh, you've got a finger joint jig here that he in invented. He has all sorts of strange mm. protuberances. I know what these two do. Those mount on the miter gauge. Right. Uh, then the I I uh, surmise that these two, uh, the uh, carriage bolts with wing nuts, allow you to slide the faces back and forth. That's also correct. To adjust uh, to adjust the position of this face in which you've mounted a pin. Right. The pin guides each cut. That's right. It fits, each finger fits over that pin for the next consecutive cut. All right. Now, this is something new. What's this? This is my adjustment. I can very quickly and accurately adjust the relationship between the pin and the blade by loosening this wing nut and uh, loosening course, they'll, they'll these in the back, the nuts, loosening yeah. all the wing nuts, and turning this until the, the proper relationship is achieved between the blade and the pin. Okay, so this is what? Uh, what what's the thread pitch on that? That's 32 threads per inch on that. So one revolution is a 32nd of an inch. And one, one half is a 64th, is, one quarter is one 128th. You can get down pretty, pretty small there. I use a slot screw so that I can judge half quarter revolutions very easily. Okay. Well, let's uh... mount on the miter gauge with the mounting screws in the back and leave it on until you're done because this setup is critical. The uh, this piece of wood I've planed exactly to one quarter inch thick. This is my spacer. This is my Feeler gauge, yes. Feeler gauge, exactly. Now this will will not go between the blade and the finger, so I've got to adjust the uh, adjust the front face of this finger joint jig. Do that with a screw here, just turning it, pushing the front face to the right until it drops in right there. So now now the pin is exactly one quarter of an inch. Away from the away from the uh, the inside edge of the data. That's right. Then I'll lock that down with the wing nut. I'm going to double check it this way so it lines up with at least two tips of the blade, and it looks like it's right there. Lock down the wing nuts in the back. Okay. All right. Now, the next step is how deep the blade's going to get cut. We haven't set any of the depth of cut yet. So you want to set that up for what, a quarter of an inch? Well, I want to set it up just slightly over that quarter inch because I want something to sand off. I want to sand off those pins that are sticking out. Always ends up with a nicer corner that way. Better to sand off, sand off the, uh, the fingers than sand off the whole side of the drawer. That's right. It's a whole lot easier to take care of that. You're using you're using a the straight edge on uh, your uh, the face of your miter gauge, and and using a this combination square here for my my zeroing tool. I meant <laughs> I meant your, uh, your combination square. I knew that. So did they. I had to correct you anyhow. Okay, that's zero. 
Now, we're going to very accurately lower that table exactly one quarter of an inch plus one sixty fourth. And to do that, guys, guess what you use? We're going to use the stop power that we to uh, uh, last week. Some of you may have seen the tip on this, uh, this stop collar. It's got exactly a 16 pitch thread on it. So one revolution uh, moves this surface one sixteenth of an inch. And I've uh, developed some tapes, vernier tapes, that you can put on the top and the bottom. The top tape allows you to adjust of this surface in thousands. The bottom tape allows you to adjust it in one hundred and twenty eighths of an inch. You move this where you need it, and then you drop the table down so that this surface rests against the carriage, and you're right there. Now, I have, I'm going to move the collar, as Nick demonstrated, four revolutions. That's four sixteenths of an inch. Or one quarter of an inch total, and then move it one sixty-fourth or quarter revolution. Drop the table, and I know that that's exactly where I want it to be. Okay. Now, I've got two pieces of wood here. Normally, I would use scrap when I'm making a project, but for demonstration purposes here, I've got a piece of uh, walnut and sycamore so that there's good light and dark contrast. The first cut is made with the walnut front. Okay. The bottom edge is, major mark. is marked and it goes against the pin for the first cut. Now th that first cut becomes our spacer for the first cut on the side by just turning it over, setting it on top of the pin, putting the bottom edge against the uh, against the front board so it's bottom and to bottom. Bottom to bottom. And that way we cut our rabbit, which is the first cut on the side. Okay. And now we're able to move the front back behind the side. It will be offset like this. And we'll notch progressively over um, the entire width of the board. Okay. Well, you're going to see this in a, in a, in a minute, folks. Uh, if you have any questions, you uh, start answering the, or asking them now, uh, because after we make this cut, presuming that the cut is uh, successful, uh, we're, we'll, t we'll take questions on this section of the sawdust section. Truth. 
not quite wonderful, not perfect, but close. They're a little tight. Uh, okay. All right. If they're tight, that means that the, um, the pin is too far away from the data, right? Right. Okay. So we, we would have to move this a couple thousands that way. Right. Uh, if it were too loose, it's too close to the data. Correct. And that will, we'll be able to move this very accurately. I'm going to guesstimate a quarter of a turn. Or one one hundred twenty-eighth of an inch. Lock that down. And then do it again. We can do it again. Okay. Uh, Jim and I are going to take uh, questions uh, now. I want to remind you that uh, uh, if you'd like to uh, have the plans for this uh, this wonderful jig. They're on the blackboard. All you have to do is right-click on them and then uh, choose Save Target As, and then you can uh, enlarge them as much as you want. You can't buy a jig that's this intelligently designed. You actually have to build it yourself. So um, we'll see you over at the laptop. Folks, uh, we know about the bandwidth problems. Uh, uh, Drew's been signaling to, uh, this to us while we're uh, uh, working. I, it just uh, uh, nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. This is uh, this is internet traffic. It's uh, higher than we've ever seen it. We're trying to push this out to you at just 102 kilobytes, and our bandwidth has been dropping down to as low as 69. So. Um, Anyway, uh, are there any questions about um, the finger joints? Not yet. I tell you what we're going to do. Um, uh, Jim and I are, are uh, uh, going to go um, uh, uh, cow tipping. We go cow tipping every the fourth um, uh, Saturday of every month. Uh, Drew's going to come along this time, too. He's never been cow tipping with us. Uh, and... Uh, in the um, in the meantime, uh, I know that you've missed a lot of the uh, the finger joint uh, section because we've had these bandwidth problems. It will be up and it'll be free of charge for two weeks. So uh, just go to uh, shopsmithacademy.com, follow the links to Hands Online, go to Sawdust Sessions, and it, uh, the links will be down there on Monday on the uh, bottom of the page. Um, in the meantime, we're uh, preparing a third sawdust session, uh, and we're going to be doing another maintenance um, uh, question. Apparently, we're getting a lot of things in customer service about how to uh, change out the switch. Uh, so we're going to take the uh, do the the old four prong switch and the new two prong switch to show you the difference between the two. Uh, then we're going to start a, um, a series on the overarm router. The overarm router is a unique tool. Jim and I both love the tool. It does a lot more than, than uh, uh, anybody has uh, yet uh, discovered. And so we're going to take five different uh, uh, sessions on these sawdust sessions and just talk about uh, the overarm router and show you all the things that we've discovered. Uh, we're going to show you a, um, uh, a finishing trick, a stain, that Jim and I have used for years. It's a most amazing stain because it is absolutely dead even, and there's nothing you can do to screw it up, really. Uh, and then finally, we're going to show you another bandsaw technique called compound cutting. Extremely useful technique. It's like magic. Um, and so that's it. Um, from uh, uh, Jim and I, uh, goodbye. What? Andrew, Andrew, from Jim and I, Andrew, and oh, yeah, well, Katie's out like a lot here. Uh, uh, work, uh, work well, work safe, and work to your heart's content. We'll see you.